Hi, I'm Katie and I've had emetophobia for about 10 years um, and since I've been doing the Thrive program with this book um, I can now say that I am completely over my fear um, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> um, I think I would now consider my reaction to being sick and for other people to be sick is normal now um, as in it's a bit unpleasant um, and not something that I would actively seek out to do um, but it's not something that causes me anxiety anymore or unnecessary panicking and worrying and sleepless nights. <laughs> um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, my journey and um, what I've tried, how it's helped um, and a bit about the Thrive program as well. Just as a sort of um, motivation for other people to hopefully pick up the book and help themselves the same way that I have. And my cat is running about like a maddie so uh, <laughs> ignore him if you hear him. Um, yeah, so I'll just make a start. Um, so, unlike a lot of other people I've seen do testimonial videos, um, I didn't actually have my fear when I was a child. Um, I've seen a lot of people who've had it since they were three or four and throughout school, but really mine only developed when I was 17. Um, I mean, before I, I was scared when I was about to be sick, but it never really was a problem um, in between illnesses. I never sat and panicked about it or worried about it or if someone was ill at school I wasn't really bothered um, like I've heard other people have been. Um, but this all changed when I was 17 um, in my last year of high school. Um, for me it seemed to have been triggered, not that I'm allowed to say that, um, it, it was more um, started developing after I had a stomach bug um, when I was watching a scary film with my mum uh, one night um, and during which um, I felt sick not because of the film <laughs> um, I actually had a stomach bug and had a 24 hour bug and was sick for the next 12 hours or so um, and then since then I didn't really notice that I was developing a phobia uh, particularly I just gradually stopped going out with my friends. Um, my anxiety was so bad that um, any kind of feeling in my stomach um, I would think oh god I'm going to be sick today so I wouldn't go to school um, so I missed quite a lot of school on that last year. Um, and particularly when I was 18 and the whole drinking culture started I went out even less um, and did the same, ended up just doing the same day-to-day -day routine so I would uh, Eat, eat the same foods that were safe, went to the same places, um, I stopped eating out completely, um, I stopped going to the cinema or anywhere that I would feel trapped in the middle if I was at uni, which I ended up doing um, a degree course. Um, so I was there for four years, uh, I would always try and sit on the outside of the aisle, um, otherwise if I was stuck in between loads of people I would get really really panicky and it would be um, not much fun. Um, so yeah anyway, back then when I was 18 I didn't even watch any new TV or films. I usually sat in my bedroom watching reruns of Friends on box sets um, because I knew they were safe um, and didn't really go out of that tiny little comfort zone that I had. Um, I was also having panic attacks uh, three, four, five times a week sometimes, which would include uh, getting up in the middle of the night, um, waking up, panicking, thinking I felt sick, uh, sweating heart palpitations uh, and shaking, physically shaking with fear because I thought I might be sick. Um, so as my anxiety got worse so did my panic attacks and the vicious circle kept going on because every time I felt sick I would get panicky. Um, so I decided that this was <laughs> not really uh, going very well so I decided to start going to counselling. Um, and it took me actually three sessions to even say the word vomit to the <laughs> to the counsellor. Um, I was that scared, I didn't even want to talk about it. Um, and the counselling helped to some degree because it made me realise that I actually was a proper phobia, it wasn't just me being weird. Um, and you know he helped me with some relaxation techniques and uh, kind of challenging my comfort zone a wee bit but it, it really only scratched the surface of what um, what could have helped me really. Um, I was then referred to CBT about maybe about a year later or so um, and I started exposure therapy. Boy that was fun. Um, <laughs> time watching, looking at photos and watching videos of people being sick um, it was a very stressful process um, and although that she was good she kind of did it in a sort of gradual 
um, build up. It caused so much anticipatory anxiety um, the week leading up to the whole day. Uh, I just did not want to go and do this. Um, and even the therapist said that she wasn't particularly enjoying <laughs> treating me either because she had to go and research all these things. Um, but yeah, uh, where was I? Where was I? Um, and even though, yeah, kind of, uh, by the end it helped a little bit with my fear of other people, um, but not so much the fear of myself. In fact, the fear of myself hadn't changed at all. I was still terrified at the thought of me. And now all I had was all these visual images of what it was like to be sick in my head. So um, <laughs> although I was prepared a bit more for seeing people on TV uh, being sick and in films and things, um, it really didn't do anything for me. Um, so the anxiety and stress got so bad that um, I was, it was finding it impossible to eat. Um, particularly this spiralled out of control after a bad breakup that I was going through at the time. Um, it was causing the anxiety and stress was making it really difficult for me to, to want to eat at all, anything. Um, and I eventually ended up losing over a stone in about a month. Um, it was really quite bad. Um, I was then referred to a dietitian. Um, and I was basically told to put cheese on everything. Um, and I had lived off build up, build up drinks and toast for a while. Um, but anyway, life got a little bit better later that year and um, I was managing to eat a bit better. And for the next few years, I was still having the odd panic attack and I was able to unable to face things like parties or weddings. Um, certainly couldn't stay till the end of these things. Um, I'd end up at home early in tears once start people started being drunk um, just feeling awful about myself and feeling so stupid and abnormal and yeah it wasn't, uh, wasn't a great place to be in. So when me and my now husband decided to move in together uh, I decided to go back to CBT um, and asked to focus particularly on my thought patterns because I knew the fear of myself was still there um, really badly. Uh, I really needed to, to do something about it. Um, and we, even though there was 10 to 12 sessions, uh, I was never cured and I was, it was just a case of lowering my anxiety really and not actually um, not getting rid of it. I, mean, it's, I was able to live a sort of pretty normal life for a while and faced a lot of challenges. Um, for, in fact, I went to Mexico on our honeymoon, which I never thought I would have such a long flight or go to Mexico and try all this different food and things. So that it was things were better but I still had an incredible amount of anxiety around all these things even though I was challenging myself more. So uh, when's she going to get to the thrive part? <laughs> People are going to ask. Um, well this Christmas I decided that I would look into actually getting rid of this properly um, because over the Christmas holidays I caught some sort of stomach bug and although I wasn't actually sick I felt very sick and I'd actually retched at one point. And I was shaking and very nervous and said to myself, you know, this isn't enough. This this isn't the quality of life that I still want to have. I, I just want to have a normal reaction to this, you know. Um, so I went onto Amazon and bought the Cure Your Metaphobia and Thrive book. Um, just thought it's worth a shot, you know. <laughs> it's not going to do any harm at this point. Um, I didn't really know what to expect when the book first arrived. Um, but uh, it arrived a few days later, it arrived a lot quicker than I it said it was going to um, and I thought I better, I'm going to have a look into this uh, this, th this Thrive thing first before I start reading through it. Um, so I looked at all the amazing reviews on Amazon and I watched the uh, Emetophobia Awareness Day um, video on YouTube um, and cried on and off the entire time watching it because uh, I'd never heard anybody actually get this phobia as much as Rob did when he was talking in that seminar. Um, the, the whole video gave me hope and uh, motivation to get cracking on this book because uh, it, it just made so much sense how he was talking about it. Um, it was really quite good. Um, so yeah, once I started reading it, uh, in just a couple of chapters, um, I was learning more about myself and more about this phobia than I did in 10 years uh, leading up to that point, um, more than any therapist or Googling have, uh, had ever done. Um, so I was really feeling hopeful that this, that I could actually beat this thing. 
Um, so the book kind of made me learn a bit more about belief systems and how I maintained them myself. Uh, I learned how to think and experience life more internally, not relying on uh, outside sources for my happiness anymore. Um, and learned about unhelpful thinking styles and how I was creating them and maintaining them. Um, and one of the main things I, I help, uh, the whole book can help me uh, stop anxiety from happening in the first place, uh, not just dealing with it when it actually um, was happening to me. Um, when I was reading through the book, the definite turning point for me was working on my self-esteem. I mean, making this video myself <laughs> is a huge um, achievement for me because I used to hate the sound of my own voice. Um, to hate looking at myself on mirrors, let alone videos played back. Um, so yeah, this big positive for me doing this video right now. Um, but yeah, working on my self-esteem was definitely the best part of the book. Um, for me, it was a turning point when everything started flipping around um, and going the right direction. Um, so the book doesn't just describe what it's like to be an emetophobe to you, like all these other things do. Um, it, describes how how we maintain being in, in this um, emetophobic state and how by actually flipping things around we can get ourselves out of it. Um, yeah and the, the good thing about the book is it actually shows you how to do these things. It doesn't just tell you oh you just think more positively um, and you'll get over this. It actually tells you how, you, how to do these things. Um, so the book didn't just help my phobia it did a lot more than that, which was the added bonus. Cause I was just expecting, you know, the phobia will be the thing that um, that it will cure. Um, but it's increased my self confidence. It's made me a happier person day to day. I'm now living each day as it comes, and not looking forward to the weekend or looking forward to the next big thing that's happening, um, or waiting for something I've ordered online to arrive in the post, which used to cause me like. Ooh, it, was the, it was the best thing that could have happened. Um, now I'm just living day to day, feeling happier and, and doing so much better. Um, last little bit. Uh, but all in all, I'm feeling really, really fantastic and I feel that I now have everything I need to be able to go ahead um, in my life um, and deal with things as they come more calmly. Um, I really do believe that and um, well, yes, um, I really hope this video has helped people realise how great the book is and how much it helps um, and that you don't need to just learn to live with this phobia which I thought was just the best I was going to get. You can actually overcome it and get rid of it. Um, not only that but um, with the added bonus of becoming a positive more happy person in the process. Um, so thanks for listening to me babbling on and I will stop now. Bye.